The Ten Lords Commission is the most mysterious organization of the Shenzo Alliance. While I had a hard time grasping their role at first, it quickly dawned on me that they are some kind of underground police force that handles jobs that other commissions are not well suited for. Thanks to a Foxian tale of the hunted quest in 1.5, we've had the opportunity to learn more about them. Not too much, mind you, cause even if they were a central figure of the quest, we still barely know anything about them. But as always, that won't stop me from diving deep into the lore. Here's everything we know about the most interesting organization of the Shenzhou. The Ten Lords Commission, also known as the Long Life Supervisory Authority, is contrary to popular belief, not one of the six commissions of the Alliance and is not restricted by the six charioteers. In case you didn't know, the six charioteers are leading figures on each Shenzhou ship. On the Lofu, for example, the six charioteers include people like Jing Yuan, Fu Xuan and Yu Kong. If the Ten Lords want to do something, they don't have to report to anyone. They just do it! Of course, there is an internal hierarchy, probably, but the point is that they operate independently. Oh, and before you ask, Homu, if the Ten Lords Commission is not part of the Six Commissions, who are the Sixth Commission? Well, while they don't have commission in their name, it was implied in one of the Pump Pump quiz events from the past that it's actually the Cloud Knights. I recently saw someone calling them the Soul Police and that really stuck with me. You can see in their design and the nature of their work that they are inspired by the traditional Chinese exorcists. I mean, they are exorcists, dealing with situations and enemies that can be associated with the supernatural. Of course, none of the monsters they deal with are real ghosts, but extraterrestrial creatures that exist in various forms. Just look at the Heliobi. They are a shapeless species of pure energy that appear as flames capable of speech. They can also possess humans. For any civilization that is not advanced enough to recognize them, they seem like real ghosts. Also, the tools that they use to deal with monsters are, in fact, traditional exorcism tools, such as the Lunambra Gourd that we use during the event to seal the Heliobite. So, yeah, Soul Police is a pretty fitting description. Now that we've established that the Ten Lords Commission is independent, let's talk about what they do, cause that's the most fascinating thing about them. They handle a variety of jobs, but the most important ones are dealing with the Mara Struck and the long life species that violate the Ten Unpardonable Sins. The Ten Lords Commission has three divisions. The first division guides those who succumb to Mara, the second division deals with vicious criminals, and the third division manages life and death. While the jobs of the first two divisions are pretty self-explanatory, the third division's job is a lot more cryptic. What does dealing with life and death mean? Well, you see, the inevitable fate of the long-life species is that they will eventually get struck by Mara, which usually happens when they are around 800 to 900 years old. Note that this is the average. We saw people as young as 650 getting struck and others who have lived way past 900. Anyway, people who are about to be struck by Mara begin to develop some symptoms, such as memory loss, hallucinations, lethargy, and many more. When that happens, the Ten Lords Commission will send their souls to the Hall of Karma, a place at the bottom of the Shenzhou. There, the souls are awaiting their death without having to worry about the Mara. The body of a judge from the Ten Lords Commission is connected to the Hall of Karma, and they can collect souls, decide on karmic consequences, and bring souls from the Hall of Karma back to the living world for a short period of time. This was seen during a teacher and a friend adventure quest when Xue Yi brought back the soul of Chang Zhe's master and made him possess an Arumaton. Despite being independent, the Ten Lords Commission holds great authority on the Shenzhou. Han Ming, one of the spirit spiritfarers of the commission, outright states that they are above the Cloud Knights in status. This was also shown during the main quest on the Lofu when Su Shang was escorting Luo Chen Dan Heng and had to abandon her mission due to Shui Yi's request. 
The most dangerous criminals are sent to the Shenzhou Shuling, where they stand trial before the seven Arbiter Generals and the Ten Lords Commission. This implies that the Ten Lords have as much authority in deciding the fate of the criminals as the seven Generals, which now that I think about it is to be expected since they are the one who handle them. Some of the criminals that are in the care of the Ten Lords include the Flint Emperor, who is the leader of the Heliobai, the first Sienjo native to attain immortality, and Shuhu, an emanator of abundance. Although, to be fair, nobody is sure that Shuhu is actually sealed in the box that is supposed to imprison him, but they keep it at the lowest level of the prison anyway, just to be safe. While we have a pretty good idea of what they do, other aspects remain a mystery. For example, nobody knows where the base of the Ten Lords Commission is, who controls the organization and how many members they have. But despite not knowing who is in charge, we know a little bit about the structure of the organization. Maybe the most common rank is Spiritfarer. Their main job is to handle those about to be Mara struck, but we've seen them do plenty of other jobs. Before becoming a judge, Hua Hua oversaw the management and maintenance of the Ten Lords exorcism tools as a Spiritfarer. Others have seen them exorcising monsters or even interrogating criminals. Next are the Wraith Wardens. You can think of them as the Cloud Knights of the Ten Lords. They usually accompany the judges in their missions. Unlike the Spirit Farers, the Wraith Wardens have a more combat-oriented job. One of the Wraith Wardens even mentions that the members of the Ten Lords Commission are made up of people who live in seclusion to keep the commission independent and clean from the rest of society and prevent any potential risk that would destabilize the Alliance. Besides the Wraith Wardens, the Ten Lords Commission also uses law-enforcing arumatons engraved with the Ten Lords Martial Scriptures called Spectral Envoys. And let me tell you, this mother hit hard. Their main job is to assist the judges and to subdue anyone who strayed from the natural order of life. Interestingly enough, it is said that the authority of a Spectral Envoy is even greater than that of a judge sometimes. And lastly, we have the judges. They have a variety of jobs, from subduing evil spirits, dealing with Mara Struck and punishing criminals, to, most importantly, sending the souls of the Mara Struck and those near death to the Hall of Karma. Some known judges are Shui Yi, Hanya, and Huo Huo, with the latter being a judge trainee. When someone does something that goes against one of the 10 unpardonable sins, there's a great chance that a judge will be sent to deal with them. The 10 unpardonable sins are the most important rules that the people of the Alliance must follow. Think of them as the 10 commandments of the Shenzhou, but the church will send the secret services after you if you break them. And in this case, the secret services are the 10 Lords Commission. In fact, their entire existence is dedicated to making sure that the people don't commit these sins. The first sin is involuntary immortalization. Basically, don't turn short life species into long life species. The second sin is immortality theft. This applies to thieves from other worlds who wish to steal the secret of immortality. The third scene is beguilement, referring to alien species that can manipulate minds and rob individuals of their free will. <coughs> Heliobite. The fourth scene is Mara and Snurment. You are not allowed to induce Mara into anybody under any circumstance. The fifth scene is Fratry Murder. Basically, don't kill anybody. Pretty simple, right? The sixth scene is illicit espionage. This refers to the theft of confidential information from governmental organizations. The seventh scene is prison break. I, I believe that this is pretty self-explanatory. The eighth scene is sowing discord. The ninth scene is incitement of riot. And the tenth scene is capsizing Xianzhao. Which is basically, don't sink our ships. But what few people know is that there is a secret 11th scene, which is not being subscribed to Homolabs. So if you don't want your soul to be eternally tormented, subscribe and give this video a thumbs up right now. Trust me, this is for your own good. Seriously though, if you ever find yourself on one of the Xianzhao ships, make sure to do your best to respect them. Otherwise, the Ten Lords Commission will make sure that you will never... Wait a moment. Didn't we steal a bunch of classified documents from them? Isn't that illicit espionage? Uh oh.
Please stop. Oh my god. Stop. Please. No. Not my collarbone. Please stop. Ah.